Amy Baxter, editor of Retail Leader, and welcome to Trend Talk. Every week on Trend Talk, we chat with an industry expert about ongoing retail trends and news. My guest this week is Danielle Jesnicki, Director of Sustainability for Grove Collaborative. So welcome, Danielle. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, there's some recent news from the company, which is the launch of Peach Kids. So I'm wondering um, if you could just talk a little bit about that launch, what this line is, um, just, you know, Give us the deets. Yeah, we are so excited about this. I am so excited about this. So Peach Not Plastic is a personal care line that we launched last year. Um, it's shampoo, conditioner, body washes, and and soaps. And um, and so the Peach Kids line just launched, which is so wonderful for so many reasons. And as a mom, you know, I really, and as kind of like a, a tester of Peach Kids, I'm really excited about it. Because for the first time, we have a product that is 100% plastic free that models good environmental habits and behavior, you know, the things we want our kids to learn with no trade-offs. They're so fun. They smell amazing. Um, you know, the kids love playing with them in the bath and um, they provide, they're, they're safe, they're non-toxic. They're really just this product that is created for kids, um, makes bath time fun and makes bath, bath time plastic free. And so it's just such a nice extension of that Peach Not Plastic brand. Um, and we are so excited to launch it and bring it to market. Great. Um, yeah, plastic free, I think is, is super interesting there. And I want to know just sort of what's the general difference with Grove compared to, you, you, if I'm talking about the cleaning section, like what's different about Grove cleaning products that you sell versus the general cleaning sure, products? Yeah. So Grove, as I mentioned, exists to curate sustainable products. So nothing you find on the Grove site will not meet our standard for, um, for safety, for, you know, kind of regulation of what ingredients for cruelty free. And then the other thing is that we're committed to being plastic free by 2025, as well as plastic neutral as of 2020. So that means for every ounce of plastic that we ship to our customers, which admittedly is still a lot of plastic, our industry is really, you know, kind of rooted in that we're trying to move away Mm -hmm. from it, but we collect the same amount of plastic pollution. So, you know, kind of every time you get a bottle, someone, you know, we're, we're providing that impact of collecting that plastic. So really committed to mitigating the problem, to acknowledging that plastic is a problem. And so when it comes to our cleaning products, you have the commitment to move away from plastic, to have the plastic neutral. And then in terms of formulation, they're always, you know, tested to be super effective. We, of course, won't launch a product until it exceeds expectations is, you know, kind of we can't have any trade-offs there in terms of performance. So you've always got that quality, the performance, the effectiveness. And then you've also got the standard of safety, non-toxicity. Um, like I spray the counters down right before the kids eat on them and I'm not worried about it, you know. So um, really kind of moving into safe formulation, third-party certified with the relevant certifications where we can. And then um, plant-based, which is another interesting thing. So kind of breaking our dependence from fossil fuels, even in the formulation of the product. So really designed from inception with sustainability in mind for every attribute. Can you explain to me what's the difference between plastic-free and plastic-neutral? Sure. So plastic-free, well, actually, we should say, like, free from plastic waste, um, Mm -hmm. because now we're seeing all these articles where plastic is in our bodies. So I'm not (laughs) (laughs) plastic-free. I probably have plastic in my blood and my lungs. It's really scary stuff. So we'll say free from plastic waste, meaning a product, you know, like my water bottle that um, doesn't have any plastic, isn't designed with plastic in it, um, doesn't create any plastic waste, like doesn't contribute to the plastic problem. Plastic mm-hmm. neutral is a product that is made of plastic. Let's look at this hand sanitizer I have on the table. Um, the weight of this bottle will be collected in plastic waste. So I bought this hand sanitizer. It's unfortunately still packaged in plastic, but I know that Grove has committed to collect the equivalent weight of plastic pollution. So we actually partner with a company called Repurpose Global. They have locations around the world, um, where you're providing really high impact work to what has previously been kind of an informal waste collection industry. And so by formalizing it, by creating a price, and we actually focus on the collection of low value plastics, which are just more likely to be those thin wrappers, like that kind of pollution that looks Mm -hmm. like it's everywhere, you know, and like just really focused on cleaning up both, you know, land and water pollution, the water, you know, the pollution by the river, you see that's like going into the river, going into the ocean. Um, So really, really focused on, mitigating the issue. So does that make sense? I know I get into the details Mm -hmm. always too quickly, but plastic free, no plastic, plastic neutral. We are collecting that plastic pollution elsewhere. Yes. Got it. Thank you. And I have another definition question for you. Great. How do you define a sustainable product? So this is an interesting question. Um, In some sense, 
This kind of depends on what you want out of the product, right? So there's no perfect example of sustainability. There's no sustainable company. Like everyone, you know, has an impact. We do our best to mitigate it. So I think you have to focus on what is the intended impact that you want to have with that product. Is it health? Is it plastic free? Um, is it made from you know a material that's regeneratively sourced? So I think it's really important both for consumers to know what are their sustainability values. You know, do you want safe products for your kids? Do you want plastic free so you don't have any plastic pollution? Um, do you want FSC certified wood that protects forests? You know, so there are different ways to define sustainability. So there is in that way like no perfect product, no perfect way to say, this is a sustainable product, this is not. And so I think that's where consumers start to feel really overwhelmed of like, well, this one, you know, has this attribute, this one has another. Um, just kind of take a deep, my advice is like, take a deep breath, figure out what it is that you want out of the product, what are your personal values, and then find the brands that focus on those. So I think in general, the things you want to look for in a sustainable product are um, packaging that is truly going to get recycled. And so that is unlikely to be plastic unless it's number one PET plastic and you have plastic recycling in your area. Um, a sustainable product should not be made you know, with harsh or harmful chemicals. Um, hopefully a sustainable product comes from a supply chain that is ethical, that the labor is fair, that there are standards and you know, kind of social compliance, like that that is all checked independently. And then... Mm -hmm. um, that it is hopefully regeneratively sort, you know, kind of the, the raw materials that you're sourcing aren't depleting from natural environments, they're also restoring them. So those are the main dimensions for sustainability, but I really like to talk about it more specifically in terms of the intended outcomes, just for that reason, is it becomes just this blanket term and I think lends itself right. to greenwashing in some extent when you just say like, oh, it's sustainable, but maybe my definition of sustainability isn't the same as yours. Yeah. And this, this totally leads me to my next question, which is like, how can consumers know that they're getting like a better product? I, I think it's like so much easier when you just have a marketplace like Grove or, you know, some retailers are doing it themselves, like Target's like clean beauty kind of thing um, that tell you, right? But, but how can consumers, you know, know what they're getting and know what to look for? Yeah. I mean, I think it does come back to that question of what are you trying, what are you looking for? Like, are you looking for safety? Are you looking for recyclability of packaging? So I think whatever your kind of values are in those areas, you want to familiarize yourself with the certifications or kind of with the main materials. The things that I look for, I mean, yes, that's why Grove is so wonderful and that's why our consumers shop with us. It's like they know everything on the site has already been vetted. We've kind of done that work for them. And I think you're seeing a lot of marketplaces move to that model of, you know, I, I see these seals and I kind of roll my eyes though because so many retailers are like just rolling this out and then you go and click on the page and look at their standards and they're pretty light, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of work to do. So, I mean, unfortunately there's no real shortcut. Like you have to kind of learn the certifications that matter. So for example, um, for kids clothing, for anything cotton, you want to look for GOTS, which is Global Organic Textile Standard. Mm -hmm. um, and so that means a product has, you know, certified cotton. It's from farm to um, all the way to factory to make sure that, you know, kind of no chemical residues are on the product. So that's a certification, you know, I kind of look for with kids stuff. Or Okatex is another one in textiles. All of our cotton products at Grove, of course, are GOTS certified because we do always strive for that gold standard. Um, and thinking then in general, like you want to just think about your impact. Like, are you buying a lot of plastic? You know, could you transition to not plastic? Even better than buying single use anything is how do we think about refillable, reusable, um, mm -hmm. really, you know, even swapping with friends and neighbors, like just, you know, kind of consuming less. At Grove, we're super focused on the refillable and reusable and the concentrated format. So kind of decreasing the footprint of your products um, and just thinking about how to minimize your impact in general. So I think, sorry, it's like a long answer to say sustainability is not... <laughs> there's a lot to it. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot to it. It's complex. Um, I encourage consumers to really kind of think about the things that are important to them. At Grove, ours are plastic-free kind of slash environmental sustainability, making sure our materials are ethically sourced and made. And then, um, of course, the safety, you know, so making sure the products are vetted from an ingredient standard. So And cruelty-free is kind of like you must have, you know... Um, so those are really our standards. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I would encourage consumers to look on any marketplace's stand. Like every company will say, here's how we define, you know, they have to kind of provide their methodology of like how they're categorizing these products. So if you look at those and you're like, 
I've never heard of these certifications or this, this doesn't seem that rigorous. Like you kind of know how much, how loose they were. <laughs> like how, so I think there's a big range right now of companies who are doing yeah. a good job and not a great job. Um, I'm encouraged by the general interest in sustainability 